Good morning, Agape Seremban and Agape Nilai. Welcome to our Sunday online experience. Now, the first time I greeted all of you was back on the first Sunday of the year. And here we are right now, the last Sunday of the month. Time really flies. So let's make full use of our time, be it online or offline. We are still God's church in such a time. And this is how we do church and do life nowadays. Stop waiting for things to happen and start making things happen. And yes, you can invite someone to join us right now. So go on and click on the invite button in the chat box and you can send a standardized message through all media platforms to your family and friends. Church, let's make year 2021 of corporate worship and personal discipleship a great one. And it begins with a heartfelt worship of God together. Good morning, Agapians. Welcome to our online experience. Are you ready to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? For He is good and His mercy endureth forever. Amen. We're going to declare it together. From every nation and time, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. time and all the time God is good yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord you are good and your mercy endureth forever Lord you are good and your mercy endureth forever people from every nation and from generation to generation, we worship you. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So good, so good. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time, you are good, you are good. All the time, all the time, you are good. Yeah, yeah. He is good. If you believe that He is good, why don't you begin to lift up your voice and give Him a shout of praise for His goodness? Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. People from ever, people from every nation and time, from generation to generation, we worship. 
when two or three gather together in my name there I am in their midst let us not take for granted what God can do through a screen what God can do in with small gatherings because he is the same God the same God that we are worshiping the same God that we are praising he is the same yesterday today and forever he never changes and that's what we're going to declare as we sing this next song
never change us, church. He's so true. He's so faithful. He's so good. He's so gracious. He's so merciful. He's so compassionate. That is the God that you serve. But he is the same God who reigns over all the earth. You may go through trials and tribulations, but rest assured, the faithful and ever-present God is the same. And he is with you. Nothing surprises him. He sleeps in the storm. That's the God. You promise to never leave us nor forsake us, oh God. Help us to live our lives, oh God, confident in your goodness, oh God. Confident, oh God, trusting in you in everything that we go through, God. Let nothing shake us. Let nothing stop our praise and our worship, oh God. We thank you for being in our midst, oh Lord, even as we move on. Continue, oh God, to speak to us. Open up our hearts, oh God, to receive your word, oh God. We love you and we honor you. 
In Jesus' wonderful name I ask and I pray. Amen. Wow, it's so refreshing to worship God together wherever we are. We may be scattered, but we are all still connected as one body of Christ. And together we can do so much more. So let's continue to give our tithes and our offering for the work of the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness, especially in such a time of God where we have no control over the situation in our nation. Yet we can still trust in you for we know that you are in control of all things, O oh God. So Father, we just pray you continue to bless our tithes and our offering, O oh God, and you will use it for the extension of your kingdom. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Honour the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then He will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. You can continue to give through online transfer, ATM banking or physical drop-off at church. Church, here's some announcement. Next Sunday is our Connect Sunday where we will be celebrating our Connect groups in doing life together and taking the opportunity to dedicate all our Connect leaders online. So for this special event, we will be sending out Connect boxes to all our CG members containing some items. So do get in touch with your CG leader for more information. And we will be partaking Holy Communion together as well. So do remember to prepare your emblems next Sunday before the service. And for young people, the youth gathering is happening this coming Friday at 8 p.m. on Zoom. Do come together and spur one another on to grow deeper in God because we are all always better and stronger together. For more information, do check out the youth Instagram page or connect with any of our youth leaders for more information. Alright church, let's get ready for the word and do engage with the sermon by interacting with one another in the chat box. And let's open up our hearts and welcome our senior pastor, Reverend Benjamin Yeo. Hello everybody and welcome back to church once again. It's a joy and a privilege uh, for me to be with you this morning and of course bring the word of God to you. Now this morning I'm going to bring across a message entitled Anointed to Serve. This morning we are going to have a dedication service towards the end of my sermon and we're going to dedicate the church committee members, the full-time staff members and also ministry heads. Now, in case you are listening in and you are not a leader and not part of a leadership team, please don't tune off because for me, everyone a leader in your own right. In other words, every one of us, regardless, we are actually leading in some way at some point. Now, let me read to you 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 6 to 13. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse caught Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shama pass by, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Now Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Oh, they're still the youngest, Jesse answered. Ah, but he's tending the sheep. Now Samuel said, send for him, we will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. Now, he was ruddy with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him, he is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed him in the presence of his brothers, and from that day on, the Bible says the Spirit of God came upon David in 
power. Remember that? In power. And Samuel then went to Ramah. Now, most of us know the story that uh, somehow the first king of Israel saw King Saul messed up and God has rejected King Saul and King Saul will not continue reigning for long. And so God instructed Samuel to go to the house of Jesse to anoint the second or the next king of Israel so as to uh, replace King Saul. Now, Samuel succeeded, but not as planned. Now, I want to bring across to you three things. One is your physique and outward qualifications are, the, are not the most important criteria. Let me say that again. Your physique and outward qualifications are not the most important criteria. Now, uh, you must understand because when Samuel first anointed the first king of Israel, Saul, the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 9 that Saul came from a well-respected family. Uh, he was an impressive young man. The word was impressive young man and with no equal. In other words, he was way ahead of everyone else as far as his peers were concerned. And he stood a head taller than all the rest of Israel. And then the Bible says Samuel anointed him as the first king of Israel. Now, with that as a backdrop, you can almost understand and, and, and kind of uh, uh, realize why Samuel was looking for height, for physique, for outward qualifications. And so Jesse had three of his sons, three older sons, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shammah. And when Eliab first passed by, you know, Samuel said, surely this must be the one because he was a warrior. Everything, he had everything going in terms of the physique, everything, you know. Because he was a warrior serving in Saul's army. But God says, man look at the outward, but God does not. So the outward appearances and paper qualification are important, but not necessarily the most important important. Alright? Now, let me also say you may be young, but does not mean that you cannot lead. Now, what is most important is a recognition of who we are in Christ. An awareness of God's hand in your life, in your leadership. So regardless, let me say this, each one of us is a leader and whether you are aware of it or not, each one of us do exert a measure of influence over others. So you may be a housewife, you may be a mother, you may be a homemaker, uh, yet you are a leader to your children. You are a leader to the people you mix with. We exert influence. And so every one of us no, we are leaders and it's not paper qualification, it is not the title, it is not you know, uh, uh, all of the uh, trappings and, and trimmings of, of qualifications or what have you. Uh, it's not that at all uh, because God does not look at the outward. The second thing is this, your heart is what matters most. You see, when the first son of Jesse passed by, Eliab, when Samuel took a look at him, it reminded him so much of King Saul. And he says, surely this is the one. But God says, no, not surely. Surely this is not the one. Because man may look at the outward appearances, but he says, God looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. A heart for God and, pe and His people instead, you know, of all the outward trimmings. So it is pastoral leadership. In other words, simply put, it is a heart for God and His people. The heart is the most important thing. I'm going to give you a number of scriptures here this uh, morning. And they all talk about the importance of the heart in serving God. Psalm 78 verse 72 says, 
And David shepherded them with integrity of heart and with skillful hands, he led them. You see, a combination. He had qualifications, skillful hands, but yet what is most important and what came first was, he says that integrity of heart. So important, right? Uh, as one great leader once says, you know, in serving God, first of all, it is a character, and then comes competency, and, and then it is chemistry. But character always is above competency, simply because competent, as far as competency is concerned, you can teach, you can show, you can coach, but character is something very hard to change. Either you have it or you don't have it. It's not that you cannot change, but character is a matter of the heart. And when so David, the Bible says, shepherded God's people with the integrity of heart. And then Psalm 16 verse 7 says, I will praise the Lord who counsels me, and even at night, my heart instructs me. How many of you know, in the quiet moments in your life, for me that's so true, when I'm thinking of situations, I'm thinking of tension, when I'm thinking of, of differences with different people, you know, it is my heart who instructs me. There are so very often my heart, my mind thinks I will do this, I will do that, or get even. But ultimately, you know, I surrender to the promptings of my heart, empowered and inspired by the Holy Spirit. And that's why it's so important. The Bible says that for David at night, it says, my heart instructs me. And it's so important. Church, friends, listen to this. You know, in the quiet moments of your life, in the midst of all the noise and chaos, learn to listen to your heart. Follow your heart. And, and, and if you are to follow your heart, and if your heart would instruct you, then make sure that your heart is good, all right? Make sure that you guard your heart, that you guard your heart. That's why in Proverbs 4.23, it says, above all else, above everything else, guard your heart. It says, because it is the wellspring of life. This is the wellspring of life from the heart. Life flows. Proverbs 14.30 says, A heart at peace gives life to the body. So true, isn't it? So true. Uh, there are people who seem to be physically well, but they seem to be always sick. I know of a friend like that, that I have coffee with every now and then. And all the other friends say, actually, there's nothing wrong with him. It's all up here or even down here. All right? We call it psychosomatic illness. It's the heart. It's, and the, says, the Bible says, the heart at peace gives life to the body. How true, isn't it? Not just life to this physical body, but life to the body of Christ. And as leaders, a heart at peace gives life to the body. And Proverbs 16, 23 says, A wise man's heart guides his mouth and his lips promote instruction. What we say, how we say, all right, actually uh, flows from our very heart because it is the heart that guides the mouth. So remember that, church. It is no wonder that the psalmist says in 19 and verse 14, May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Words of my mouth, meditation of my heart. They are all linked together. So the bottom line is this. If I would have a sentence to, to summarize all that I've said about the heart, is this, the matter of the heart is the heart of the matter. The matter of the heart is the heart of 
the matter. Now, number three, your anointing is uniquely powerful. Your anointing is uniquely powerful because 1 Samuel 16 verse 13 says, when Samuel anointed, took the horn of oil and anointed David in the presence of his brothers, this is what happened, the result, the consequence, or what happened, the, what what. What happened that followed? Uh, it says, The Spirit of the Lord came upon David, and very specifically, in power. All right? The Spirit of God came upon David in power. Now, we all know in 1 Samuel chapter 16, David was anointed as the second king of Israel, and the Spirit of God came upon David with power. And we know that the following chapter in 17 of 1 Samuel, that's where David fought and defeated the giant of a man called Goliath. All right? Now, but David didn't go from the anointing into the battlefield to fight Goliath. Because if you read 1 Samuel chapter 16 and towards the end of chapter 16, we read this, that Saul uh, was tormented by an evil spirit. And through wise counsel, it says, uh, seek for a great musician, a harpist. And with his skillful playing, all right, the evil spirit will depart from you. And so they found David, the shepherd boy, who actually was a great harpist too. And David, the Bible says, he came to the palace and he played the harp for Saul. He played the harp for Saul. So the first incredible, amazing and powerful act that David did was not to use his slingshot, but play his harp. Play his harp. Uh, in fact, his first days of palace life was not to rule, but to serve. And that's why in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 21, the Bible says, David came to Saul and entered his service. Okay? Can you imagine? He's really anointed the, the second king of Israel. Anointing has, been take, has taken place. Uh, and Samuel has singled him out. God has given the stamp of approval upon his life. Uh, and yet his first days of past life was not to rule, not to sit on the throne, but at the foot of the throne to play the harp for Saul and to serve Saul. And he entered his service. And as we know, most of us know, if you know your Bible, he was kind of a Saul's armor bearer. So a willing worker... You see, when Samuel first came to the house of Jesse, Jesse had all his seven sons pass before him. And he says, that's it. And Samuel says, is there another son? And Jesse's answer was, well, yes, but uh, he's just tending the sheep. I mean, can you imagine, Jesse never thought much about David. He says, his answer shows, Yes, I have another son, but no, he's just tending the sheep. That's all, nothing more than that. And I still remember some 40 plus years ago when I first heard the call of God, I went to speak to Pastor Leslie Martin, a missionary in Malaysia. I went to speak to him about the call of God in my life simply because for about two years, whether it's my own home church here in Ramban at Evangel, or because of uh, my travels for my work, I was in different states at different times, and so very often that two years span, I, I, I've heard him a number of times, Pastor Leslie Martin. And every time he preaches, regardless of what his topic was, there's always the nudge in my heart, and God was calling me to surrender my life to him and serve him full time, to quit my job and serve him full time. And so one day after service, I talked to Pastor Leslie Martin. I still remember it was in Saramban here in Evangel Church along Jalan Rahang. 
I was just in front of the, the church entrance after the service. I talked to him about the possibility of the call of God in my life. And Pastor Leslie Martin asked me this question, what are you doing right now? I said, what am I doing right now? I mean, what are you doing for God? He asked, he, he rephrased the question. Oh, I said, I'm driving the church van. Actually, that was my main ministry, driving the church van. And I still could remember that's all I did in church was come to church, coming to church early on, on Wednesday night for, for a prayer meeting, uh, Friday night for youth service, uh, Saturday morning for Sunday service. And I come very early so that I would actually drive the van and pick people up and bring them to church. And after service, I would send everyone back that I pick up you know, for service. And after that, I don't go home because I would drive pastor, my pastor and his family for dinner because he didn't have a driving license then. And so by the time I get back home, it's very likely past midnight. And if that's not enough, I have to come to church and wash the church well. Now you know now why I like to washing the church well. <laughs> now, well, so he asked me, what are you doing? So I'm actually, I'm driving the church well and, and just doing odds and ends of physical work in the church. And you know what? I expected Pastor Leslie Martin to give me a prophetic word and say to me, Wonderful, we need young people in the ministry to respond to the call. You know, God is calling you, let me pray for you and let me send you on the way and, you know, get the forms from Bible school, the application forms. No, he didn't say that at all. All he said to me was, continue doing what you are doing and when the time comes, you will know. Wow, looking back, uh, at that time when he gave me such an answer, I wasn't too excited about the answer. I expected a prophetic word, a prophecy to be spoken over my life. But hindsight is a great teacher and I look back I said, how true it is. Keep on doing what you are doing. You see friends, great leaders are born out of great followers. Now in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 8, this is what the Lord Almighty says. This was later part in David's life. Sam, the prophet Nathan confronted David uh, because of a sin he committed. And God reminded David of his start in life and in ministry. And God says, I took you from the pasture and from following the flock to be ruler over my people, Israel. I took you from following the flock to leading. I have said this before and it's kind of acute that uh, uh, it's not original. I didn't think of this. I didn't come up with this. But many, many, many years ago, I don't know how long ago, I mean, I first heard it, it makes so much sense. And since then, I've never heard of anyone using it again. And so I guess it's mine now. All right? There are three kinds of shampoo. Uh, one is head and shoulder. All right? Uh, that's what Saul used, someone said. Uh, that's what Saul used because he stood a head above the rest of them. And so the best, they came up to his shoulder. And then there's the other shampoo that David used. is the shampoo, follow me. So I've taken you from following the sheep. And then, of course, there's a Christian shampoo called Rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. But I love the second one, follow me. Great followers make great leaders. Remember this, church. Great followers make great leaders. And if you're a young man or a young woman, you know, someone starting off in your Christian life and someone aspiring to serve God at some point in your life or, or not necessarily full-time, but just serving God. Remember this, you know, great followers make great leaders. So let me conclude by saying this, uh, that when I watched the 46th President of the United States of America Joe Biden in his inauguration service, I was uh, 
very much impressed by three things. One is seeing all of the past presidents, except for Donald Trump, I won't go into that, coming together for the inauguration service. There was Lady Gaga. Now, I don't quite uh, 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 endorse a lifestyle, but she's one of the best singers that's on planet Earth. Uh, such a range of voice and repertoire and, and all kinds of, uh, 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 kinds of genre of songs that she, she sings and sings so well. Who sang the anthem so beautifully, all right? And then Mike Pence, the outgoing vice president, who was present, who behaved more like the president in the last few weeks of Trump administration. And I just love that, to see, you know, uh, uh, people just celebrating the past and the present, moving into the future. And so this morning, we have got a number of people who will be uh, installed and, 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 and dedicated. But before we go into that, let's just pause for a little uh, while and then respond to the message this morning. And then whether you're a housewife by sake or whether, say, uh, or, or whatever you're doing, uh, whether you are running a company or just a worker among your colleagues, uh, a wage earner, whatever it is, we are all leaders in our own right and lead where you are. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, oh God, oh God, create in us a clean heart, oh God. We just thank you. We just thank you. Father, we thank you for the great example of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. And in so doing, he gave his life as a ransom for many set the greatest example of servitude when he took that basin in hand, that towel in hand and washed his disciples' feet. And God, we thank you, dear Jesus, for your great example. Lord, for setting the tone, setting the pace. Lord, setting the climate and rhythm for our service to you, dear God. And so, God, help each one of us to have a servant's heart. Especially, dear God, Lord, for the ones, for us, the ones who are in leadership positions. So we give you praise, dear God. And Lord, we just want to thank you for different leaders who different individuals who have said yes to taking up leadership. And in a moment's time when we dedicate them, we pray, dear God, the same anointing that came upon David in power will come upon each one of us, dear God. Lord, we just thank you for your word and we ask your riches of blessings in Jesus' most wonderful name. Amen and amen. So here are those, as you watch the slides or your screen, uh, these are the ones who we have actually um, set into motion and set into places of leadership. Introducing the Church Committee, Staff and Leaders of 2021. Our Church Committee Secretary Dr. Andrew Solomadan, Treasurer Michael Ong, Church Committee Members Dr. Lionel Lewis, Rajan Devadasan, and Matthew Lin. We have our pastoral team led by our senior pastor, Reverend Benjamin Yeo, supported by assistant pastors, Reverend Tan Chet N, Reverend Joshua Yong, Reverend Ignatius Anand, and Pastor Yeo Kyung Jen. 
including our ministerial staff, Esther Tan and Frankie Yap. Our church staff, media and tech team who has been working triply hard this last season, Kenny Wu, Steve Yap and Kenny Yap. Our admin staff also including Tang Wai Kin, Lois Lee and the husband and wife couple, our gardener and cleaner, Apu and Mala. Introducing our Chinese pastoral team led by our associate pastor, Reverend Paulus Wong, assistant pastors, Reverend Mabel Kok, Pastor Peter Wong and Pastor Samuel Lim, supported by ministerial staff, Annabelle Leong. Our Chinese administrative staff, Poon Yan Ching and Shirley Yu. Our church executive operations that handles the entire operations of the church, supported by communion preparation, Julie Edwards, and our social media head, Jared Chong. Introducing our ministry divisions and departmental heads. We have five divisions that we're going to introduce, starting with Creative Division, Division Supervisor, Reverend Ignatius Anand. Our Worship Director, this year we introduced a new director, Veronica Lewis. And the Creative Arts, Dance Head, Yamada Megumi. And Choir Director, Kimberly Lim. And the Creative Division, we also have an expanded tech team. Sound, Steve Yap. Lights and Build, Rachel Tan Devadasan. Build also, Lee Shi Yin, Visual, Jared Chong, Live Camera and Photography, Kenny Ngu. Birth out of adversity, we also have a new department, the production team. On site production, led by David Yao, online production, led by Steve Yap, and video productions by Kenny Yap. Next division we have is our hospitality division. Supervisor, Reverend Joshua Yong. Starting from the right, the first impression teams. Asher Head, Albert Wang. Traffic Head, Yo Kyung Kwan. And a new head for F&B, Sean Yap. Birth in this season also is our grounds and logistic teams that handles all setup and SOP, headed by Frankie Yap. The next team would be the Bridging and Integration team, under which Assimilation, headed by Jaceline Chang, and our new online host department, headed by Pastor Yo Kyung Jen. The next division, the Live Stages division, Supervisor Reverend Tan Shet N, under which we have our People Groups Ministry, starting with Children's Ministry, Coordinator Wu Shu Jen. Under which we have two sections, the taught section for 0 to 6 years old and kids section ages 7 to 12 years old. Taught section coordinator Lim Tian Lai. Kids section coordinator Mark Gomez. Our youth ministry pastor, Pastor Yo Kyung Jen. Young adult ministry pastor, Reverend Joshua Yong. And a senior ministry headed by both Reverend Joshua Yong and Reverend Tan Chet N. Our next division would be our Christian Education Division. Newly appointed Division Supervisor, Pastor Yo Kyung Jen, assisted by Esther Tan. Agape Resource Center, our own homeschooling system, Principal Esther Tan. Admin Staff, Lucy Law. Our ARC Board of Governors, Wu Shu Jen, Lim Chen Chi, Ko Ai Ling, and Matthew Lim. The fifth division is our Community Outreach Division, jointly headed by Reverend Tan Shat N and Reverend Joshua Yong. We have Drop In Center, headed by Frankie Yap, and our Food Bank Department, Tang Wai Kin. We also want to dedicate the team that is running the Agape Community Centre, Nilai, headed by our lead pastor, Reverend Joshua Yong.
Praise God. Let's look to the Lord in prayer as we bring each of these to God in prayer. And those of you who are worshipping with us and connecting with us, especially those whose names and photos came up and where you are in your placement of leadership, will you kindly, as Pastor Irvin Rutherford says, cup your hands like this, all right? And look to the Lord in prayer and believe that God is going to pour out His Holy Spirit upon you as I pray for you, as we dedicate you to God, as we consecrate you to God for this year's faithful service. And believe me, that God is going to pour out His Spirit. The Spirit of God is going to come upon you with great anointing and great power as you cup your hands and look to God and be in anticipation to receive that anointing. Amen. Amen. Shekara ba 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 rianda, mundo rianda raba kera ba shanda raba ba rianda, hinda rama kata raba ba 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 rianda. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh God, we just give you praise. We just give you praise, Father. Right now, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I want to bring before you all our church committee members or board members, dear God. We bring each of these men to you in our prayer. And we pray, dear God, and thank you that over the years, Lord, 39 years in total, and as we approach our 40th year as a church in existence, Lord, we thank you for the many who have served on the board. Lord, men and women whom you have caught, men and women in the past and now in the present, Lord, O oh God, who are here to be dedicated, we thank you, Lord, for all these years that, Lord, we have a good set, we have good sets of, of board members who have served you well. And because of that, dear God, we have seen how, dear God, your church has flourished, your church has been blessed, and we thank you for their lives. We thank you, Lord, for each one of them, Lord, who has given themselves, Lord, and served you well in that capacity. Lord, continue to bless our present church board members. We bring them to you in prayer, and we ask your riches of blessings will be upon their lives. Lord, even as they make policies, Lord, as they begin, Lord, to look into, Lord, oh God, and many other details of the church, life you will continue to bless their lives dear god and let them add value to what we are doing here in agape lord when you bring lord and to bring to you all our pastors to you in prayer our ministerial staff to you in prayer and lord also dear god or our full-time church staff to you in prayer lord we bring these to you dear god lord i want to thank you lord for the pastors and the ministerial staff that you have given to us, dear God. And Lord, oh God, they've been such wonderful people, such a wonderful team that you have put together. And I pray, dear God, your riches of blessings and anointing will come upon their lives here and now. And God, I pray, dear God, that you will continue, Lord, oh God, to cause them, dear God, to hear from you. Lord, cause them, dear God, to receive vision from you. Cause them, dear God, oh God, to be led and to be empowered and to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. Lord, keep them, Lord, oh God, healthy and safe and bless their family, dear God. Lord, oh God, bestow upon them the gifts of power, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, dear God. Release your gifts upon their lives, we pray. And Lord, we thank you. We just thank you for every single one, Lord, oh God, of these. We also thank you for the administrative team, dear God. Lord, thank you, dear God, that these, dear God, look into all the other non-spiritual things, but yet important things, dear God, so the church can continue to function well. And Lord, we ask your riches of blessings will also be upon them, dear God. We thank you, Lord, for every backup staff, regardless of what they do. Lord, help them recognize, Lord, their value in you. Help them see 
themselves caught of you. Help them see, dear God, that what they do matter. And we pray your riches of anointing be upon them too. Lord, we bring our ministry heads before you. Lord, departmental heads and people in charge of different aspects of the ministry. Lord, we as full-time workers and pastors will not be able to do it without them. And so thank you, Lord, for these, Lord, O oh God, who are willing to step in and step up to do what they do, Lord, so that together we can build your church. And so today, this morning, God, we look to you and we ask for your riches of anointing. We ask for the power of your Holy Spirit to come upon each one of us. Lord, I dedicate and I consecrate and set aside every single one here for spiritual leadership and spiritual ministry. We give you all the praise, the glory and honour and we say, come Holy Spirit, fill us and empower us and anoint us and we pray all of this in Jesus' most wonderful name. Amen and Amen and Amen. Praise God. I don't know about you, I'm going to give them a great clap and just cheer them and praise them on. God bless you, church. Amen. We are all appointed and anointed as servants of God and we all lead where we are. Keep our leaders in prayer as we serve alongside them. And we can join our hearts to pray together this coming Wednesday prayer meeting at 8pm. Have a great week, church, and always stay safe. Remember to be careful, not fearful. God bless you. Thank you.